Welcome to the Hydraulic Press channel. Today we are going to do science video and this time I really mean it. We are going to find out how pressure recycling affects on uh, like strength of carbon fiber submersible or submarine or pressure vessel. And we are not going to put like any strawberries or any, anything here to simulate anything. We don't want to go there. We are just purely interested on engineering part of the like mystery. And before we continue, I want to say that the whole thing is really sad and unfortunate, especially because it, there was clearly some like shortcuts taken in the places they shouldn't have been taken. And the idea of this video is to not recreate the accident. Instead, we just wanna find out does the carbon fiber structures get weaker during multiple pressure cycles. And of course, we are not like research committee. We are just YouTube channel that happen to have suitable equipment to do like this small scale test. That's going to be like small step towards understanding what might gone wrong. So we try to keep the video as tasteful as we can and let's see how it goes. And I have here engineering help. David from Tesla 500 and Kronos cameras or Krontek happened to be here visiting us. So we did this with David. It was good to have some help on the engineering and we decided to machine the ends out of steel. We don't have to use titanium because the weight doesn't matter at all. Then I happen to have this carbon fiber tube laying around. It's 45 millimeters in diameter and I have crushed it before and it can take about three tons, but I think I didn't have ends completely even. So this is now probably a bit stronger and with 300 bars that we can test, it equals two miles. The force crushing the tube like this is going to be four and a half tons. So we, it's about to get crushed like this, but I'm not sure how strong it's like in like a radial direction, like from all the sides. So we are going to now pop this one or try to pop. I think it's going to crush. We can go up to two miles with the pressure chamber. And after this is failed, we know what's the maximum pressure that this can take. Then we are going to build an another one and test that to let's say 50% of the maximum, like 25 times and see how it reacts to that. Yeah. But this is now glued. It's as close approximation of the real thing that we could make here today. So now we are going to just get our test set up ready and pop this. If you haven't seen this before, we use hydraulic press to pressurize the system. We crush this cylinder that is full of water and it pushes the water through this hose into the chamber and then the pressure increases on the chamber. I try to increase it quite slowly. And then we have windows on both ends. Light goes in from here and picture comes out from there. And on this end, we have a Kronos 1.4 monochrome camera, uh, monochrome for high light sensitivity. We're gonna be running about uh, 640 by 360 at uh, 3, 000, uh, 5,900 frames per second. So that we could get a good balance of like resolution and uh, or, uh, temporal resolution and spatial resolution. And we're also running the live record mode, so we'll have also a 60 frame per second uh, uh, video of, the, of the, the, whole, uh, the whole test sequence, plus the, uh, the high speed at the end. Yeah, and we tried also with the color camera, but we realized that there's only like black and white. Yeah. The, carbon, <laughs> the carbon fiber and end caps are all black and white, so we won't yeah. really notice any difference anyway. Yeah, and I think this is more about getting uh, maximum amount of data than looking good. Mm -hmm. We just want to know what happened. Yeah. Get the scientific data. <laughs> yeah, so let's go. Okay, we are ready to go. We can see the test vessel from external monitor here. And I'm going to use the maximum pressure revolve here to like adjust the pressure there so I can like increase it slowly. We are not going to use like three hours here. We can do like 20 seconds. <laughs> That's like almost kilo, that's like kilometer already. Oh, that is... 
we have maximum pressure here on the pressure meter. This measures inside. That was 82 bars. So definitely was the sides going in. Oh, we got a bubble on the, what happened there? That's interesting. We got a bubble on the window. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, like on, let's yeah. Oh, let's go frame by frame. Yeah. Uh, I have never gotten here, that let's before. See, let's see this one. Yeah, the bubble formed on the window. That's annoying. Yeah, let's hope that the next time goes without yeah. that. You can really affect that yeah. where they form. Then we just make another one and try to run some cycles like, let's say, 40 bars. Mm -hmm. So that was at 80 bars? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's 800 meters or half a mile. Okay, we are ready with the next one. I calculated that if I go 15 bars on the press, then it's 40 bars at the chamber. So 400 meters, so half of the 800 meters where it pops. Yeah, give it a try with about 40, see yeah, how it goes. Yeah, I go like 40 dives. And these are pretty fast dives. They're not eight hour ones. And since we were running quite low amount of pressure on the press, it made it move quite slowly. So it takes like 10 seconds to go down and 10 seconds to go up. So about 20 seconds per dive, which is quite fast compared to real ones, but it it what it is. Okay, that was 40 dives to 50% of the maximum. Didn't break. Should go like 75, so 600 meters. Yeah, we were going about 50 bars, so maybe a bit more than that, yeah. Yeah. So it was so like 40 bars. No, I was seeing 50. Ah. It went about 52. Okay, let's go like 60 something. Yeah. Can you, can you read the readings? We did like 20 dives to 60 bars and then we tried to test the implosion depth and it didn't break at all. Okay, there is two options. Either we have a leak and that's full of water, I don't believe it. Or then it's really hard to make submarine out of carbon fiber and there was just like the smallest error on the first one that made it really weak and this one is perfect and therefore like stupidly strong but I'm going to pop this open and let's have a see <laughs> okay I'm really hope that it's not full of water because I don't want to pill a third one what is David your like guess is full of water or not I don't think so because the cylinder is still high enough Hey, yeah, that's true. That yeah. didn't go. No, we, we really notice it. Yeah. It's... No, oh, it did. Uh, oh. oh. Yeah, I know that we, what we do tomorrow. So, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that's really unfortunate. Okay, we just did a lot of work for nothing. Turns out that, uh, or I think we learned something. The glue was leaking or then the carbon fiber just next to the glue. It's hard to say. I'm not sure was it like away from the camera. I haven't looked the footage so closely. But can you see anything there? But the water was able to go in, which is not optimal on submarine. But I think it highlights the fact that it's not easy to build carbon fiber submarine and be sure that it's okay. Because of course I looked the glue pretty carefully and it looked all good, but it wasn't. Of course, I'm not using like official submarine glue if there is a thing. But uh, uh, I made it now extra super cool. There's two layers of glue and it's tried a long, long time. So we are going to try the same thing again. 40 bars, 40 times. Okay, and here goes the pressure cycling test. I was pretty sure that we have again leak on the system because it was really squishy. The cylinder went really much down when you increase the pressure. And that tells that there's air on the system because the steel chamber and the holes and stuff like that, they don't stretch almost at all. So every time when the system is really stretchy, there is a lot of air inside. And I always try to get the air out because when you compress water, it doesn't store any energy, but compressed air stores and that makes the system much more dangerous to use. And because I was so sure that the vessel leaks, I didn't use like one hour pumping it back and up. 
because I have a shirt that I have to build fourth submarine and do all of this again. But we did 15 minutes of dives from 40 bars all the way to 70 bars. So these last ones are really close on implosion depth. And after these, we decide that it's time to test how strong the submarine is at this point. Okay, what was maximum? 84. It's exactly the same. We did like 15 minutes of dives mm. and no effect at all. And we had like way more air now on the system, so I think the implosion was like more violent. This yeah. because I thought that the submarine leaks because it, it was so squishy the piston. Mm. And I'm pretty sure that the thing didn't leak at all because after this imploded and I tested the system again it was way way more like stretchier than before so breaking the submarine introduced a lot of more air in the system and even if it would be slightly leaking and let's say half full that's only two bars of pressure inside doesn't affect that much like the results because we went four bars over the first test and I have to say that this result isn't so much result at all. If it would been like much weaker than the first one, that would be result because even on this small time scale and like scale in general, it would get weaker. Then it would be quite plausible that the bigger one is also weaker after many dives. But now because we lack the time and scale, this isn't like very good picture of the like full scale submarine and many like 10 hour dives. But I think this is like, the, this is the result what we got and it tells something. At least I know that these are really hard to build now. And please keep the comments like in same spirit as this video. Let's focus on like engineering, carbon fiber, testing, stuff like that. And not like any distasteful stuff about like implosion or like human tragedy behind the whole thing. This like engineering stuff that we wanted to cover here. And I think we completed that like pretty well. After all, this is like YouTube channel, not like research committee. I think like there's going to be more detailed explanations in the future. But I think this is like good and interesting fast and with small scale equipment done test. I'm, I'm, pretty, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased how this went. And big thanks to David, I couldn't like do this without him. There was a lot of like, we got a lot of like back and forward ideas yesterday about how to build different aspects of this thing. And the camera setup was really nice. So uh, here is link to David's channels and also on the description there is link to Kronos cameras that we use to film the high speed. Yeah, and that is all for today. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.